Hey, welcome to the Black Hills. You're from eastern South Dakota, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the home of the water, right? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit up on the hill from the water. Oh, good. Yeah. That's right good. So it's dry, huh? Yeah. yeah. It's drier. It's drier. It's been a very wet year. Oh, it's terrible. Very wet. It's that global warming thing, I think. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think people come to the Black Hills to celebrate. You know, and I think we're here to celebrate today. Three things. Luann, I think the first one is life. Aren't you glad you're alive? Mm -hmm. George, aren't you glad you're born about the same time so you could meet, date, court, Ex and she could ask exactly. you to marry her? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't there, so I don't know. I don't know how that went down, you know. But I think anymore we kind of reach that point in our relationship where it's time to get married. We just know it. I like to say that it's not just life, but life together. You might have discovered that together you're more than you are apart. I like to say in marriage that one plus one doesn't equal two. It equals 11 if you're going in the same direction. <laughs> okay? So life together produces the second thing we're here to celebrate, which is love. Very, very misused word. We use the same word to describe our relationships with our earrings as we do our relationship with our George. I love these earrings. I love George. <laughs> same way? No. Different words, but yet it's the same word. The Bible has about 20,000 different words to describe love. Things like patient, kind, forgiving, understanding. And here's one you don't hear a lot. Long-suffering. comes from 1 Corinthians. I long-suffer you. There's times in marriage when you just long suffer. That's a form of love. It's not all that little thump, thump, thump thing. In fact, in the Greek, there's four words for love. Uh, the first one is agape, which is the love that God has for us. The second one is phila, which is the basis of the city of love, Philadelphia. Phila is a brotherly love. There's another one called storge. And storge is that love that you have for that wonderful jacket that you've had for a while. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just, it's comfortable. A mm -hmm. pair of shoes, old shoe love, I call it. Mm, there you go. Right. <laughs> and the fourth one is the most misunderstood, which is eros. And eros is that love that makes your heart beat faster. I like to call it Valentine's Day love. You want to, it's on demand. You want to have it sometime. You don't want it all the time. It'll drive you crazy, you know? <laughs> so... But the love, love is is a very, very misused word in our in our language. Um, and the third thing we're here to celebrate is the Lord of life and love. He created us. He sustains us, whether we like it or not. We're moving to that day when we'll give an accounting for all that we do. And with that in mind, I'd be amiss if I didn't charge you, oh, here and now, to make Him the true and living God, the head of this union that you're putting together. Okay. So with that, I'd like to open with a word of prayer, if I could. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for showing favor to Lou Ann and to George today with this absolutely perfect setting and perfect day. We're so grateful that you provided that. We pray, Father, that your son Jesus would join us. And it's his name we pray. Amen. Well, it's time to ask you a question. I'll start with you, George. Will you have this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you promise to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony so long as you both shall live? Wonderful. You gonna pull it together here, huh? Lou Ann, you gonna keep it together? It doesn't matter if you don't. <laughs> you can lose it. Will you have this man to be lawfully wedded husband? Do you promise to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony so long as you both shall live? I do. Wonderful. All right. Mm. That's all right. You got to wait till I pronounce you. It's okay. You can kiss him if you want to. I don't care. <laughs> I'm the only one of these three that's read the book. Um, for countless ages, the ring has been an outward sign of an inward commitment. When you wear a wedding ring, what you're saying to the world is you're committed to another person. And really the only difference in your relationship today versus yesterday is today someone has made a commitment to you for life. And you've made a commitment to somebody for life. So it's all about commitment. 
But I think there's some things about rings I love to talk about. And it's very, very easy to do with these two rings. The first one is they're beautiful. These are really gorgeous rings. You did good. I think that's a symbol, a symbol of God's love for you. As the years go by and you look down at your rings, and you will, and you'll say, it's a good looking ring. I want you to remember God loves you. The second characteristics, they're made out of pure metal. That's a symbol of relationship to each other. You have forsaken all others. And the third characteristic, where's the end? Unbroken circle, isn't it? Just like your marriage. So if you'd put your flowers down for a minute, Luann, if you would take that little one, and if you'll look at, uh, if you'll give me your ring finger, Luann, and George, if you'll slip that on, looking at Luann, but repeat after me, with this ring, with this ring I give you my promise, you my promise. That, from this day forward, that from this day forward, you shall not walk alone. Not walk alone. My heart will be your shelter, my be and my arms will be your home. Your turn. Oh. George, if you'll give her your ring finger. Luann, if you'll look at George and repeat after me. With this ring, I give you my promise that from this day forward, you shall not walk alone. My heart will be your shelter, and my arms will be your home. Now, <laughs> by the authority of the state of South Dakota, but mostly looking to God for his divine blessing, I now pronounce that you are husband and wife, Mrs. Weiser. Would you like to kiss your husband? Go for it. Now, your first official act as husband and wife is something called a sand ceremony. I don't know how much you know about it, but it comes from the second chapter of Genesis, the 24th verse, which says, For this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Just a bee. <laughs> He's just hovering around back there. And uh, in the, traditionally in the Christian church, we use a unity candle. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> we use a unity candle to do it, but in South Dakota, in the, anytime outside, unity candles don't work. You need a flamethrower <laughs> instead of a candle. Yeah. So the sand ceremony does a very, very good job of showing how two become one. We start with a center container that we're going to build layers on. And that has a base of white. The base represents Jesus Christ, the foundation of everything in life worth doing, especially marriage. And then we have the orange, which represents George and all that he brings to the relationship. And the pretty, which represents Luann and all that she brings. So we're going to start with you, George. The reason we start with you, we're going to have you pour about a third of that into that container. The reason we start with you is because Scripture says that we're the spiritual leaders of our home. We're not the boss. We know who the boss is. <laughs> okay? But we're the spiritual leaders. So if you would pour about a third of that in there, we'll start building some layers. Maybe a little more. Okay, Luann, if you would. George, if you'd do about half of what's left. Okay. Luann, if you do about the same amount. Okay, now together, if you'd finish pouring them together.
something to take home as a little memento of how you looked on your wedding day, Luann? Beautiful. But you know, life has a way sometimes of not always being beautiful. I got another little container here. It's got the same three colors in it. What happens to us in life is things come along that shake us up. We have an illness in the family. We have a death in the family. We lose a job. The engine goes out in the car. Wrong person gets elected president of the United States. <laughs> I didn't say what year. Okay. <laughs> well, we do tend to argue over a lot of different things, and that's one of them, right? But the adversity that we face, no matter what it is, tends to bring us closer together. In fact, you guys have been together long enough to have some adversity in your life, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Has it br brought you together or apart? Yeah. Don't run from adversity. It brings you closer together and makes George look like you. <laughs> I'm going to put it right in here on top so George can remember what he's going to look like down the road. <laughs> now, the sand didn't come out as I shook it up. And that's what keeps marriages together. It's the last symbol. That cork represents prayer. Prayer keeps you together. As the cork kept it from coming out, this will keep it from coming out as you go home. Pray together, stay together. Simple. God's real. Let me close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so very, very much for the love these two have for each other. We pray, Father, blessings and peace in their marriage. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, guys. I would like to be the very first to present to this distinguished group in the entire world, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. George Weiser. <laughs> okay. And I... <laughs>